Oh, look at this. Just got off work. Two o'clock in the morning. I've got my letter to the judge here. I'm going to read everybody. February 2nd, 2010. Do you know that America, I mean, Israel bombed the Gaza Strip today? February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Also, Doja's birthday. Happy birthday, Doja. She's three today, and the puppy's three weeks old today on February 2nd. They were born on January 12th, 2010, and that's the same day as the earthquake in Haiti. And I want to know, why is it easier to get guns and ammo and soldiers and tanks and guns and all guns like that twice? Why is it easier to get guns that they all have to Haiti than food and water? Why? I've been asking that for two weeks. Well, no, three weeks. Now, three weeks. Three weeks today. And Doja's happy three-year-old birthday. Yeah. Well, what we're going to do, I'm going to read you the magistrate's letter that I wrote. I've been trying to be able to write a letter to the magistrate since October 15th when I found out I missed the court date. And it's taken me two weeks to write this. They said I could write it in January, the middle of January. But it's my only, my only chance. <laughs> My only, I can't afford a lawyer. I can't get a lawyer appointed to me. I'm from England. I need help. I really need help to keep seeing my son. And here is the magistrate's letter. Because what else am I supposed to do? This is my final chance. This is it. This is it. If I don't win this, this is it. MJ, rest in peace. This is it. Reasons for not being in attendance at court on October 14, 2009, and my side of the questions and answers that my ex-husband was asked and answered. Emergency request for Chris to see our dog's puppies before they go away. I am so very sorry I did not attend and did not mean to disrespect the courts. I tried to get a letter to you a long time ago in October, but since I was not represented by an attorney, I was told to wait for due process of paperwork to be sent to me. When I found out that next day on October 15th, I'd missed this important court date before I was totally beside myself. I have been trying to find a lawyer ever since, but no help if I have no money to pay for one. I got a consultation attorney to help me in December, but he could not help me do anything else as I barely had extra money to pay the consultation fee. He and other lawyers have told me to go to legal aid and the rest of the places that help pro bono, but I have honestly tried them all and no help if legal aid is denied. I picked up the transcripts of the October 14, 2009 hearing date I missed just a few weeks ago on January 11, 2010. I have been trying to get pro bono help ever since, as my ex-husband did not say we had been having our son at our houses each week, as was the status until I missed the court date. I could not get legal aid referral as did not sign the citizen box as I am not a citizen, but I'm a res <laughs> legal resident alien. I am pro se, as currently in indigent status due to real estate market. I have been seeking employment and just started a delivery job at night so I can do my real estate in the daylight, and I hope to close something very soon. My child support is all paid up, and I'm not going to be homeless, and I have a place to live. Honestly, no disrespect intended, Your Honor, and I will try to explain it to you in the following pages of what transpired to make me miss my court date. Now, that was all on page one. I've got 18 pages, so I don't know if this is going to fit. I really don't know. Okay. Dear Magistrate McGree, January 25th, 2010. That's when I started writing the letter. That was Christopher's um, nine and... Two thirds birthday. I'm just about to be trying to get out on my slipper here. <laughs> oh, you little rascal. That is freedom. Yeah, she's always looking for freedom. That is freedom, come on. That's the one I'm keeping right there. That is freedom. <laughs> your Honor, I am very sorry and ashamed of myself for missing your court date last year on October 14, 2009. When I rang my ex husband on October 15th at noon to remind him of our mediation, at 1.30, Martin's wife, Kate, asked how I could have missed the court date. And I said, what? How could I miss the court date? What are you talking about? And she told me. My whole being just sank to the floor, and I felt everything rush down from my head to my toes. 
knowing that I'd missed the most important day of my life and that I did not get to say my part of the parenting story that unfolded that day. No one is sorrier than I am for not being at the trial for the court date to determine the reasons for termination of shared parenting as I am. If I had money to afford an attorney, I would not be writing this letter to beg you to please look at the situation from my point of view. Your secretary, Debbie, has been very helpful to me ever since I got the court transcript. I noticed all kinds of things wrong with it. Nothing was wrong with what you asked or thought of me, Your Honor, even though I may have seemed like a very uncaring mother when I did not show up, and I remember my first husband's ex-wife did that, too. Lots of the facts Martin stated are true, but construed. My ex-husband somehow twisted the whole truth of why my son was with him more and was not telling the truth about school. I want to thank you and your secretary for allowing me to write this letter to you. I've been working on it ever since she said I could write you a letter last week. I'm hoping her last name is a sign for me. It's got the word free in it. And I will have a chance to speak and let you know the situation. I do not want to write too much or too little, so I have been forever rewriting this for days. I want it to be as concise as possible, but it's very hard to fit it all in. I do not know if I can attend my letter in the future, but I am a realtor and know we have to make everything legal if paperwork is involved. And I may leave an important incident out as I'm doing real estate and taking care of puppies each day and gone delivering pizzas almost every night. They rang while I was writing this tonight, even that I cannot go in. And I was not scheduled because my son is more important to me. I'm so very sorry I did not attend the hearing and I did not mean to disrespect the court. When I showed up for the mediation on October 15, 2009, is when I first tried to get a letter to you about the day before. But since I was not represented, I was told to wait for the due process of paperwork to be sent to me. I picked up the transcript of the October 14, 2009 hearing date I missed on January 11, 2009, 2010. And I've been trying to get pro bono help ever since, as could not get legal aid referral and did not sign the citizen box. I am pro se as instant status right now due to real estate market. I have been seeking employment and just started a delivery job at night so I can still do my real estate in the daytime. When I found out October 15, 2009, the day after I missed the court the day before, I was totally beside myself. I cried for days and called the court to see if there was anything I could do, and all I could do was wait and have not seen my son on my own since. Honestly, Your Honor, there was no disrespect intended to you or the court, and I will try to explain the situation and what led up to this hence and forth and do so as legally as I can for you. I will tell you the whole truth and be willing to swear on the Bible under oath. I am currently writing a book about real estate racism, and the plot drastically changed last August. When I went to jail... I have got so much to say that it sometimes reads like I talk, so please forgive me. It's hard for me dealing with this custody situation at the same time as the arrest and conviction, which was a reason for my ex-husband's full custody request. I am a mother who just lost custody of her son. I am also a realtor who, after doing videos when Chris was not with me of Ryan Holmes and the bank bailout of the, in the subdivision I once used to live, I got arrested for foolishly putting peace signs in a garage's wet cement. The period of the court date was a week and a half after I had moved very quickly from the big house in the suburbs to a little house in Dayton on October 5th. I even have a story about that, and it seems like my whole life is a story. And I've wanted to write a book about how to be a British teenager in America ever since I moved here, but now it's three decades later. My closing for bias have been working with all summer and wrote offers on other houses before we got a deal together was supposed to happen September 28th. We found out a house to close on in August, but the seller decided not to sell it. So we had to keep looking. The closing was delayed till October 1st. I didn't get paid till October 2nd. I got a rush. It was almost over. I didn't have any money for closing. I had to rush to me. My boxes got lost. I couldn't find the paperwork. I got 